I mean, going to school in London was very important because I come from a small town in Austria. So just, you know, going to like London in 2007, that was huge. It was a really exciting time there. It was just about meeting people, going out. And I think, yeah, I think more so than school. I think that's really what informed a lot for me was being in London and meeting everyone I did. I guess I, even when I went to school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I was, you know, very obsessed with fashion as a teenager. And I, and you know, I had heard about St. Martin's being the place for fashion, really. And I think initially what I wanted to do was menswear. Once I got there, this, actually the teachers gave me very good advice. They're like, you really just care about an image. So they put me into a different path, which was fine art, um, photography, essentially. I didn't really know why, what the sort of bigger goal was. I think it was all quite like, I guess there was just an interest and in like a, a, that I followed really. And I think, I think I feel lucky because I feel like at the time when I was young, like people, there wasn't so much a question of like commerce, you know, I feel like it wasn't really, I mean, surely my parents were thinking about that, but I don't think I ever really had like a moment where I like thought about the like career path more so like you know, something I was interested in was clearly the thing I was going to pursue. So, yeah. Mm, well, I think it was, I should add, I was a very bad student. And sort of like being in school was maybe my side project of everything else that was important at the time. So, which doesn't, you know, I think I still appreciate all the things I learned in school and I'm very happy I did what I did. But I think it took me just a while longer. I had first jobs interning or like assisting art direct with art directors. And I think also what, to be honest, in my very early, in my early 20s, I don't think I really understood set design the way maybe young people do now. I feel like now there's such a transparency because of social media, you know, everyone's tagged on Instagram and I think every, you know, I think there's such a transparency on like the key players that make images. And I mean, I was aware of like, you know, set, set elements and the power of set in a picture, but I don't think I ever really thought about the people who made them. And once I started working in art direction, I think that's when I kind of had uh, a deeper look at that and, you know, realized that I think it is really marrying things that I enjoy, like, you know, sculpture, which is what I did in, in college. And then yeah, really collaborating closely with photographers and making images. I don't know. I think, I guess, I would worry sometimes that it could be considered overstepping, but I think I work with people who appreciate that bit of overstepping, so I don't ever really, f I didn't feel like it was ever um, frowned upon. But I, I mean, I guess, if what you're talking about is like hybrid creatives and if there's space for them, I think what's still a very traditional formula in the industry is how credits is, credits are given to uh, creatives on a project. You know, I think, I think that's just how the structure is made, you know, whether that's credit in a magazine, whether that is, you know, um, the paycheck on a project, I think it's, they're very um, traditional brackets and I think this isn't just myself I think there's so many people that just do multiple things at once so I yeah I do think there's space for that I mean collaboration is everything <laughs> there's um, obviously the obvious collaboration which is the people that work within my team right there I mean they're really key like I cannot I can really only be as good as my team is and I you know, owe so much of, you know, the execution, the ideas to them as well. And I think it's important when you form your team, even or your collaborators, that everyone brings something different to the table. Now that's really what makes it possible because you, yeah, you need people to always go the extra step. And I feel lucky that I work with people like that. Generally, every project is really varying. So I think there are certain times when, you know, a, a photo shoot can be all about the fashion. And the fashion is really what leads the ideas. Then another time it can be a hair concept, it can be a location, it can, you know. And I think I like that everybody involved in these projects can sort of step forward, take a lead, 
or sometimes you know be a supporting role but i think yeah working with people that have the flexibility to do it all i think that's kind of important i think what's really amazing about new york is that you just very quickly can feel at home here more so than other cities and having having moved you know before i think that's that's really a very strong point new york has because the city is just extremely welcoming the people here i mean i also think it's just like there's a constant move of people you know coming in and out and so i very quickly felt like this was a second home and i think now it became after over 10 years it became my primary home really where do i go to i mean i go to books a lot right i think that's if i had to point at one source i would say it is books but i also i think it really varies i think it it all matters right it, i think sometimes you can think about i don't know something you learned in school you know like mythology some fiction that you read or something that informs later on an idea or like triggers an idea but i also think i don't know i i do also just like spend a lot of time that I don't want to call it wasted, but I think, you know, we're all like on social media or like, you know, sometimes it's, it can be also important to keep up with the Kardashians and then know what's happening on that side of culture. Like a lot of it is just like what interests me in the moment that can be scrolling through like an auction catalog, you know, in the middle of the night to like, yeah, a movie. I mean, I guess for everyone, it's, it, it's similar to everyone, but I think it's constantly changing for me too. I guess I I go in and out of phases, you know, I can be lazy as well. Sometimes I don't go to the cinema for a while <laughs> and then I go to the cinema a lot. I do like to see art shows. I think especially for set design is very important to look at execution of, you know, sculpture and that I really enjoy. I think that makes a huge difference for me is going to those places in person rather than just looking for books or the internet. And I mean, the Margot Robbie, Vogue cover, I guess, you know, again, this it's such a different project because it is a Barbie shoot, right? So you are suddenly looking at completely different things. I think what I looked at for that was like, like early American, like pinup illustrations and sort of, you know, Gabriella, the stylist, she said she wanted to create these different Barbie characters. And so much of that happened with, you know, the early work of the artwork of pinups you know there's always a different character for each pinup and what i love so much about those is how graphic they really are i mean they're they're really informed by like advertising you know and and there's such a clarity in like the way the the character is played out and also what the set would roll the set plays so i think you know i mean for that shoot that's what i was looking at for instance but you know then again i wouldn't look at that for anything for something else I think and that's what I enjoy the most about what we do. It's like, you know, a project comes forward and then, you know, there's so many things to look at, really. I don't think it will ever end. I think it's, again, so case by case, right? But I think when you work with a brand so often, the brand already has a world, right? And that you enter and I think, and I think that's really exciting because, you know, if you, you dive, you're really diving into a brand's world, but also like, you know, it obviously starts with research. It starts with looking at their recent projects, looking at their collections. And that I think is really an interesting um, process, you know, to like understand what their image world is and then execute something in the service of that. Editorials are great because they're kind of tests to yourself always as a creative and, you know, to the team you work with. And I think, I can speak probably for everyone that I work with as well. You always want to be better. It won't, you want it to be better than the thing you did before. And that's why I think I, when I agree to doing an edit, to do an editorial, it's something I don't do. On, I don't do um, lighthearted on the side, you know, it's like, that's what I'm going to dive into and really have my mind on for the coming weeks, days. I guess the space came because you, I cannot work from home. Then there, a little office came and then a big office came, you know, those were the steps. But um, Studio Wagner as a sort of idea, I think it, again, it came from just my team that I have, that I work with taking such 
such an important part in each project. And I think, you know, every every part they play in it is just as important as, as I, I don't think it's a singular creative really making the work that we do. Like in, in my case particular, like as a set designer or art director, I think it takes it takes many voices and so I think Studio Wagner was just like a way to name that. But again there was the name is pretty like one dimensional. I mean it's just studio and my name. <laughs> but, um, yeah, more like a practical term. For me, the climactic moment was seeing it work out on camera, like on the monitor, then going for dinner with Ethan, going over the edit. You know, that's like a really, that's when it's the most fun, like seeing the result. And yeah. and then it's fun for my mom when it comes out in a magazine and she can play. That's like, that's great for that, for family. I think there's a lot of panic around it that surely you know, has, there's a, surely there's a foundation, like there is a reason to that, but I think it could also be an incredible tool, especially, you know, there's things that, for instance, take me a lot of time, a lot of time, a long time. It's like, sometimes it's just like writing a simple text as a foreigner, you know, that can really draw out way longer than I wanted to. So that's kind of what I've played with. I've like written something in bad English and just seeing what comes back. and. It's quite amazing for that because it just really you know tunes it up a little um but then again i think with everything you know whether that's a reference or whether that's chat gpt is like you don't make the decisions like whether you take that one-on-one -on -one or whether you just take parts of it or like you know whether that again just is an impulse to like something else you can write so i think it's cool it's like it's like calling a smart person and asking them for help you know that's how i felt when i asked ChatGPT for advice. I think if we have new tools, like what, you know, I think that's exciting to me. That's a really cool thing. But again, I could be wrong. It could be the end of it all, of everyone, <laughs> everyone's job. But I am excited personally. I mean, Casting is very important. The, the thing with casting is ready can sometimes come very last minute, like a confirmation of a model can come the night before the shoot. But still there's the idea of the protagonist. And I think that's very important to come, to shape really a shoot, to like to come up with a creative. And so I think it's everything. And I think it's actually the first question I probably ask a photographer when they say, you know, we have a shoot for so and so magazine, I'll be like, who are we shooting? Like what, you know, casting is the first go-to that really triggers ideas for the set. I mean, you know, it's the person in the picture really that makes the picture. So yeah. I think that's what I like so much, in particular about set design. I think you can really define what that is for yourself. And I think, you know, I'm definitely still figuring out, constantly figuring out what the new projects I want to do. I think I love to make furniture, you know, I I would love to publish books. Those are ideas I'm sitting on. Um, the other day I had an idea for a horror film that I will never execute, but <laughs> you know, it's just fun to think about these things. And I think, yeah, it's, it will be constantly evolving, surely. But I think, you know, design and designing maybe things that are outside of images is exciting to me. And also publishing because I think, yeah, books inspire me a lot. So I think I have a lot of ideas for books as well. Maybe that, yeah. Well, I think following anyone's footsteps in, in a very, you know, I think that's a tricky one because I think now those now will be a different time even for me to do what I did 10 years ago again, right? It, times change and so I feel like a process would change. But I think for advice for anyone who wants to enter the industry is maybe to just do it now, like to do it immediately because if you have like an urge to do so, then, you know, I feel like there's never a good time to do it. So just might as well do it now. Okay. Do it while you're cute, you know, do, do it immediately and just figure it out. And I think being, you know, being hardworking and being reasonable 
will lead the path and I think just trying it out is maybe my best advice. <laughs>